Hello and welcome to Polymer Clay TV. Today I'm going to show you how to make some really convincing faux jade stones using just clay and powders. Let's do it. So I've got some Primo Accents in white translucent and I've rolled that out and conditioned it. Half a brick is what I'm going to work with because that's quite a lot of faux stone and uh, I don't have a project in mind for it just yet. But I'm just going to show you how to use the Jade Effects Kit, which this is the five different colors, to create some convincing faux jade. These sticks are for um, scooping out my powders. So these are the five colors that come with the set. We've got a vibrant green, a true green, a sort of light green, and then turquoise and um, raw umber for mixing. So if you look at real jade, you'll see that there are all kinds of variations in the colors. And a lot of times there'll be specks of brown, and that's just flaws and inclusions in the stone. So what I'm going to do here is mix up a few. I'm just going to cut this into pieces. I think I'll mix up four different colors. And I'm just going to do a pretty basic mixing technique, which is dumping powders right onto your translucent clay to make your own colors. And what you can do with the jade, the idea is to make it look pretty natural. So I'm going to mix a couple of the colors together. So for example, this one's quite bright, so I'll tone it down with a little scoop of the regular green. And I definitely want to get some, like a strand of turquoise, a vein of turquoise, I guess you would call it, running through there. But this turquoise will be too bright for the jade I'm making if I do it all by itself. So I'll definitely add in maybe some of this muted color and mix them together. So what's going to happen next is you want to just press this into your color as much as you can because it's tacky clay and the powder will stick to it. And then we're going to run them through the pasta machine. And because it's translucent clay, it's going to just get colored by the powders. So you want to put in as much powder as, as you can, and it'll saturate the top layer, and then you'll blend it together and come back and pick up the rest, and just keep blending until your clay is whatever color you want it to be. You can come back and add more powder. So for example, see this one is saturated now, but I can roll it up with the powder in it. I'm going to run it through the pasta machine several times and come back and scoop up more of that powder. So here's a trick for you. As you're mixing it, you're going to see the clay start to sheet that's because you're adding dry powder to a wet clay. It's not really wet, but you know what I mean. It's uncured and it's raw. And this um, block of Primo started out nice and soft, and I don't want to lose that softness. So during this mixing process, I'm going to take some of my clear Sculpey Liquid Bakeable Clay, and I'm going to incorporate it in 
just small amounts so that I don't lose the nice softness of the clay. Because when you add a dry powder to it, you can stiffen it up because you're adding a dry pigment to a um, to the polymer clay. Let's talk about how to mix these up because you can get some really interesting effects depending on how far you incorporate the powder into the clay. So here we have the bright colored green and I mixed it pretty much all the way in. I did a good job of blending. I used my liquid clay and I've got a pretty uniform blend of the color. Okay, and the same thing for the turquoise. So this is how you can create your own translucent colors of clay using just a little powder. Now for this one, which is the darker green, it may be harder to see, but what I've done is I've only blended it part of the way. And if you look carefully, you can see that this looks like faux stone just as it is. It's got swirls in it. It's a really cool looking faux stone. So what I did for that is I haven't blended this one all the way yet. I'm going to show you what that looks like. So here it is before I do anything. And I'm just going to fold it in half and run it through the pasta machine a couple times. This is what you can expect the first time you roll it through. It kind of separates into pieces here where the powder is starting to get pressed in, but the clay isn't pressed together. And the second time we have it separating into even more layers. Some of it's starting to get stuck and some of it isn't. So here I'm just going to add my little bit of liquid clay and roll it through a couple more times. So here's where I'm going to stop. I've got little clumps of powder. I've got all kinds of layers going on and I'm just going to now use my fingers to roll it up the rest of the way. Get the air out and get the layers to incorporate together. So now if you were to form this, this would be a really nice light colored jade. It's got little marks in it, swirls of color. Some parts are darker than others. And you can create different blends and different variations on the jade stone, which if you saw at the beginning of the video, there are very, very many different variations. Now, let's say you wanted to take this turquoise one and add a little bit of more realism to it. So now that we've been blending here, what we could do is kind of tap it into some of these other colors and pick them up. and run this through my pasta machine a couple times. And this is what you'll see. Now we've got some smears and some chunks of the different colors. I even might want to go a little further. And I'm just going to roll this up the same way I did with the other one, using my hands. And now I'll have those realistic looking swirls. Same with this one. Let's play with this one a little bit. Put a little of the turquoise in it, a little of that brighter color, a little of the lighter color. See how you can use your sort of random mess that you've got from playing with the powders and create something interesting. So I'm going to, this time I won't use the pasta machine, I'll just use my roller to press it in there and then I'm just going to 
add a little as I go here to the outside of the brick. And the powders are going to stick in the clay, but not get completely mixed in like they would if I ran it through the pasta machine 20 times. So what you're looking for in a faux jade is inclusions and swirls. And I'm going to bake all of these and show you what they look like baked because the translucent quality of the clay does something interesting when you're making a faux stone that I really like. And then the last thing would be, I'm going to clean this up and show you just how to blend some colors together real quick and get something cool. So I've taken this piece of the um, really well blended green that I made and a little chunk of the other colors. And I'm going to flatten this out. And then I'm going to put some little chunks of the other stuff around on here. And if you look closely, you can see a sort of marbling and stretching, and there's little pockets of translucency throughout there. And now I'm just going to roll this up using my hands, no more pasta machine, to kind of knead it like dough and swirl it. If you look at jade, you'll see that there's a sort of swirling inside the stone. Where you can see the different veins kind of showing. I really like this one right here, so I'm going to emphasize that one. Jade is also a shiny stone, so what you can do is before baking, use your fingers like I am here because I don't like to sand. I hate to sand, so this is my secret. I use my fingers to shine it up as much as I can and get my fingerprints out. I'm just sticking my pieces of faux jade onto a tile. For this last step and for this one I'm making a shape. I want to bake them for you so you can see what happens but when you stick them on the tile it makes it easier to do that preparation for baking which is the smoothing out of all your fingerprints. When you see Chinese jade you may often see some kind of a carved mark and they sometimes put a little bit of gold into that mark. So I'm going to show you how to do that using my dewdrop inks. This is galaxy gold and this is pearlescent olive and these are both great colors to do this with. So I've chosen a clear stamp and I put that on a block. It's just a little leaf and I'm going to put that into this one using the galaxy gold. So this is a really easy process. You just ink your stamp and make your mark. And this is a heat set ink, so you can, it's easy to wipe off the stamp and then it just bakes right into the clay. So it's perfect for this. And then I thought instead of Putting just a mark on this one, I wanted to put a pattern on it, like it was carved. So I'm going to use my arabesque stamp from that's a create a long thing that I designed, and I'm going to ink the stamp with this is the olive color, and I'm just going to press it. I'm going to use my block just to help get even pressure, but I'm going to press it on the other piece of jade there and get this really cool textured impression with the, the gold olive down in the cracks. 
So now I'm just going to bake these and show you what you come up with. Here are my pieces of jade out of the oven. They're nice and cool. And you can see that the ink is set. On this one, it's quite sparkly. That galaxy gold is a really nice, convincing um, golden color. Now, hopefully you can see the difference between this piece and this piece. This piece has not been buffed, and this piece has. I've also added a tiny bit of a clear sealing wax. This is Waverly wax. I like it because it's pretty simple to use and basically it's like a, a thick painty kind of a wax and I just put a little on there with my finger and then let it dry. We'll deal with that in a minute. The other thing you can do is you can take a kind of a coarse cloth, this is just a cotton cloth, and you can buff the surface. See this side is buffed and then the rest of it is not. It's that simple to bring up a little bit of a shine. So you can do this with a piece of denim. or with a cloth. And your piece will go from that matte dull finish to a nice buffed finish. So these are just shop cloths that you can get at your local home improvement store. It's pretty easy to find a box full of them. And see how quickly and simply I went from dull matte to that pretty slight sheen of stone. So you can do that to any of your pieces. See, we've got that sheen on the one side and then the other side is pretty dull. Okay, so I'll take some still photos of close-ups so that you can really see what's going on in there. But basically we've created, since it's translucent layers of the powder and, and the clay, you've got swirls of color in there and it can look really fun. The turquoise color can also, if you put some veining in there of a darker color, you could make a nice faux turquoise with that powder as well. So I hope you enjoyed this little demonstration on how to make faux stones using the jade kit, those colors that we picked especially for making jade type stones. And if you want to share your work and see what others are doing, you can come on over to our Facebook group. It's called Polymer Clay Tribe. And we hope to see you next time on Polymer Clay TV.